bless you in Jesus name Amen. father we thank you for this moment thank you for bringing us for a good scene thank you for the development spiritual that you are giving every one of us as leaders as shepherds as pastors as overseers anywhere everywhere we're ministering lord we pray that the challenge of the truth to keep to the truth abide in the truth live for the truth uphold the truth you grant to every one of your people in jesus name this work will prosper in our hands and we pray lord as we open our mouth as we teach as we preach you will solve problems for members of the church in jesus name as we exalt Christ, lift up Christ, we pray, Lord, sinners will be saved, believers will be sanctified, the whole church will be edified in Jesus' name. Let your anointing and your power abide upon every one of us. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight, we are looking at Psalm 45. I was looking at verses 6 and 7. Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. And then in verse 7, it says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. As you read those two verses and you compare the two verses together, you see it says in verse 6, as you look at verse 6, it's talking about God. It says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. It's talking about the everlasting God. It's talking about the eternal God. It's talking about the infinite God. It's talking about God. But as you look at verse 7, it says in verse 7, Thou lovest righteousness. Still talking about that God. And hatest wickedness. Hatest evil. Still talking about that God. Then it says, Therefore thy God. Therefore God thy God. Therefore, God, thy God, you understand now, is talking about two divine personalities. Thy God, that's the Heavenly Father. That's God, the Father. But now, therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee. It's talking about the anointed one. It's talking about Christ. And Christ is God. The Father is God. The Son is God and the Holy Spirit is also God. That's why you have the divine trinity, tri-unity. Three personalities in the Godhead. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And he's talking about Christ in particular now. And he says, therefore God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Let's turn to the New Testament and see the interpretation of Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7. Hebrews chapter 1. We're reading from verse 8. But unto the Son, he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Do you see the interpretation of inspiration, inspired scripture, the New Testament connecting and commenting on the Old Testament scripture? He calls the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He says, unto the Son, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. In verse 9, it tells us, Thou, Lord, righteousness, quoting from Psalm 45, and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. In verse 10, it says, And thou, Lord, 
in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and he's still talking about Christ about the son of God and he says he laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thine hand that's why as we look at Psalm 45 tonight verses 6 and 7 we're looking at the government and the glory of Christ the government and the glory of Christ that's the topic we're dealing with today and we're looking at it in three perspectives number one the eternal existence and exaltation of Christ the eternal existence and exaltation of Christ that means that Christ had been from all eternity Christ had existed from everlasting to everlasting the eternal existence and exaltation of Christ number two the eternal excellency and equality of Christ is equal to the father equal with the father I and my father are one the eternal excellency and equality of Christ number three the evident expression and exploits of Christ the evident expression is the express image of the Heavenly Father and he came to demonstrate he came to reveal he came to show what God the Father is the evident expression and the exploits of Christ what he did his majesty his miracles his manifestations his exploits let's come to number one number one the eternal existence and exaltation of Christ we're coming back to Psalm 45 and we're reading from verse 6 and from verse 7 Psalm 45 verse 6 thy throne O God is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter and then in verse 7 it says thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness therefore God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows we're looking at three perspectives here number one the eternal kingship and royalty of Christ the eternal kingship and royalty of Christ number two the ever lasting kingdom and reign of Christ his kingdom is everlasting the everlasting kingdom and reign of Christ number three is the exceptional kingliness kingliness that he is he, he, he looks like a king he acts like a king he speaks like a king and he does everything like a king and looking at him look at your king the king reigneth the way he carried himself and the way he acted he acted above every human being his kingliness and righteousness the righteousness of Christ let's come to number one in number one we're looking at the eternal kingship and royalty of Christ you see in verse 6 that is Psalm 45 the first part of verse 6 thy throne O God is forever and ever very clear thy throne O God is forever and ever that's the eternal kingship and royalty of Christ in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 Hebrews chapter 1 looking at verse 8 it says unto the Son he says thy throne O God is forever and ever there is no argument about that that Jesus Christ is greater than man Jesus Christ is greater than angels Jesus Christ is greater than Aaron greater than Moses greater than Joshua Jesus Christ greater than David and greater than Abraham before Abraham was I am that means it's eternal the Jews did not understand but the Old Testament says it very clearly unto the Son it says thy throne O God is forever and ever let's come back to the Psalms in Psalm 93 we're looking at verse 2 Psalm 93 we're reading from verse 2 it says thy throne is established of old talking about the Son talking about Christ talking about our Redeemer thy throne is established of old 
thou art from everlasting. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, the very Son of God, thou art from everlasting. Micah chapter 5, we're looking at verse 2. In Micah chapter 5, reading from verse 2, coming to near the old uh, end of the Old Testament, look at this, but thou Bethlehem, Ephrathah, do thou be little among the thousands of Judah, a little among the tribes of Judah, thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, is to be ruler in Israel. That's why we're talking about the government of Christ and the glory of Christ, is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old from everlasting that says it very clearly and very pointedly that jesus christ had been from all eternity he was not created just like the god the father is not created god the holy spirit is not created god the son is not created he had been from eternity and will continue till eternity let's look at number two number two is the everlasting kingdom and reign of Christ, everlasting kingdom and reign of Christ. In Psalm 45, reading from verse 6, it says in the second part, the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. In Psalm 145, verse 13. Psalm 145, we're reading from verse 13, it says, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. The king is an everlasting king himself, and his kingdom, the kingdom is everlasting. It says, Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Many times people do not know how great our Savior is, how great our Redeemer is, how great our King is, and they just say, look at him, and they compare him with earthly kings. But our King is an everlasting King. Not only that, his kingdom, his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and it's going to reign forever and ever. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations you know isaiah chapter 9 look at it again isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 it tells us about christ and it says for unto us a child is born but don't uh, don't uh, uh, be deceived by that a child is born but he had been before uh, in, in eternity before he was born before his incarnation unto us his son is given and then it says the government shall be upon his shoulder the government of the whole universe shall be upon his shoulder all the kingdoms of all the nations eventually will submit to the Lord Jesus Christ because his government shall be upon upon his shoulder and it will be forever and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god look at that the mighty god we're talking about christ the mighty god we're talking about jesus the mighty god is might his majesty is that of god and then he says the everlasting father I understand that that doesn't mean that Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, and Jesus is the Holy Ghost. In the Old Testament and in the Hebrew language in particular, when you are uh, when you are having a particular attribute, they'll say is the Father of engineering is the father of music is the father of science is the father because it may be the originator of that thing and because it's the originator they refer to him as the father of such and such the same thing here when it says is the father of eternity is the father of time without end is the everlasting father he is the prince of peace look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says of the increase of his kingdom he has a kingdom 
He has a dominion and he has a government of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And if you are part of his kingdom, all the riches of the kingdom, all the inheritance of the kingdom, all the advantage of the kingdom will be yours in Jesus' name. It tells us in uh, Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 31. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 31. Here the angel is speaking to Mary. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name. Tell me that name. You can't tell me the name. And thou shalt call his name, church, talk out, speak aloud. Jesus, look at verse 32. In verse 32, it says, He shall be great, talking about Jesus, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, talking about Jesus, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And then in verse 33, it says, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for how long? forever and his kingdom and of his kingdom there shall be no end and so you understand Jesus Christ has eternal existence and he also has an eternal kingdom everlasting kingdom uh, we're coming to number three now in number three it talks about the exceptional kingliness and righteousness of Christ exceptional king exceptional kingliness and the righteousness of Christ and look at some 45 once again in some 45 I'm reading here from verse I'm reading from verse uh, from verse 7 it says in verse 7 it tells us very clearly it says thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness it's talking about Christ it says you love righteousness that's why he came to make us repent because he hates evil he hates sin and he hates unrighteousness and therefore he wants to turn us he wants to change us he wants to move us away from from righteousness and he wants to move us to righteousness he says thou lovest righteousness anyone that comes to him he touches his life he cleanses his life he purges his life because he loves righteousness he wants righteousness to be in the life of everyone that claims to know the Lord and hates wickedness and hates iniquity and hates evil that's the attribute of Christ and when you come to Christ yourself you have that same nature you have that same character you have that same relationship he hates evil you hate evil he hates iniquity you hate iniquity he hates transgression you hate transgression because his nature is the nature that hates wickedness therefore God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Let's come to Hebrews chapter 1. We're reading from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 9. Thou Lord, that was loved righteousness and hated iniquity. You know, in the Old Testament, it says you hate wickedness. In the New Testament now, that word wickedness is given to us as iniquity. That means Christ hates iniquity. He hates sin. He hates evil. He hates transgression. He hates disobedience. He hates rebellion. And then the people that will come to him on the final day, I will not prophesy in your name. I will not cast out devils in your name. He will say unto me, unto them, depart from me because you are workers of iniquity. From all eternity until the present time, unto eternity. He hates iniquity. 
iniquity and he hates sin thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore God even thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows as you look at the lord jesus christ and it says thou hatest thou hatest the iniquity or thou hatest unrighteousness let's come back now to that some uh, 45 uh, reading from verse 7 some 45 verse 7 thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness uh, let's look at some 119 uh, in some 119 we're looking at verse 104 it's talking to people of god now a child of god will hate evil just like christ hates evil he says through thy precepts i get understanding therefore i a follower of christ therefore i a child of god i hate every false way and uh, look at verse 1 uh, verse 128 there in 128 it tells us that because my child of God therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right look at this I hate every false way I hate every false way you belong to Christ you are a child of God you are a disciple of Christ you are a minister of Christ a servant of Christ you say therefore I hate every false way in verse 163 in verse 163 it tells us and it says I hate and abhor lying I hate it the lying about thy law do I love when we come to God we love what he loves what does he he love he loves righteousness he loves purity he loves holiness and if we claim to be for God and if we claim to be with Christ then we love the righteousness and the holiness and the purity of us and we hate what he hates and we hate iniquity in all its forms look at Proverbs chapter 6 we're reading from verse 16 in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 it says six things does he does the Lord hate he, what he hates remember Christ hates iniquity he hates evil he hates falsehood and what he hates you also you want to hate and you see these six things at the Lord uh, does the Lord hate ye even seven are an abomination unto him he tells us begins to list them now one by one from verse 17 it says a proud look and then he talks about a lying tongue and then hands that shed innocent blood these are the things Christ hates and these are the things God hates and if you are a child of God you will hate what he hates proud look you will hate that a lying tongue you will hate that and then you will also hate the things uh, the people or the method or whatever that goes to shed innocent blood in fact it says in verse 18 it says an heart that devises wicked imagination God hates that Jesus hates that and you say you belong to God he loveth righteousness and he hated iniquity and wickedness and he hates the heart that devises wicked imaginations and feet that run that are swift in running to mischief somebody who is a panting instead of panting for God instead of being thirsty for God is eager to do evil is eager is passionate about doing evil Christ hates that and if you claim to know the Lord and to have the grace of God in your life what he hates you will hate and you will live a life that doesn't hurt any life that doesn't injure anyone that doesn't bring danger to anyone's life in fact it says in verse 19 in verse 19 it tells us there and it says a false witness that speaketh lies there are people that call themselves gospelers they call themselves members of a gospel church of a great church of you know a bible being living church and yet they deal in lies God hates that and Christ hates that 
It is because he hates evil in all his forms and he hates evil in every way. That is why the Father, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows, a false witness uh, that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. The, he that soweth discord, the people will remain in the congregation and they are knocking heads together and they are causing division and they are causing disunity and they are causing conflict. They cause conflict in the families of people. They cause conflicts in the, in the church of the living God. The Lord says there are things he hates and he hates those things. And I pray that you as a child of God will not remain, will not abide in the things he hates in Jesus' name. Can I have a good amen? amen. Malachi, Malachi chapter 2, we're reading from verse 16. Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For the Lord, the God of Israel, says he hateth putting away. Two coming together. There will be one flesh until death do them part. And God says he hates putting away. And for one covereth violence with his garment, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed unto your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. He hates divorce. He hates separation between husband and wife. Do you hate separation? Do you hate uh, separating husband and wife? Husband is living uh, maybe in Lagos and the wife is living uh, maybe in London. The wife is living here in Nigeria and the husband is living somewhere far away and they only talk on phone. That separation God hates it. It's not the will of God. And there are some pastors, preachers, they don't understand that God hates separation. They say, well, even though your wife is not here, the wife has been away for maybe five years, seven years, ten years. You'll be a local pastor. You'll be a location pastor. You'll be an overseer. Those people don't know the mind of Christ because Christ hates iniquity and Christ hates evil. What he hates, you must hate. And if uh, maybe they are living in the same town, like Lagos here, for example, that's the wife, that's the husband, but they do not see eye to eye. They have conflict. And the husband is able to, you know, bring money to the church, is able, is active, is up and doing, uh, but the wife is saying, uh, my husband is not living right. He doesn't talk to me. He's keeping money with me. He, we are separated. Even though we're living in the same house, we do not see eye to eye. God hates that. And if you are a minister, and then you say you're appointing people, you appoint this one to be that, appoint this one to be that, and the wife said, well, I don't know why they're appointing them, because the man is not in agreement with me at home. We must understand that it is not just because the man can talk, the man can preach, or the man can do whatever. We must straighten things out. The Lord, the God of Israel, said he hated putting away. And what God hates, you will hate. What God hates, I will hate. Say it again. What God hates, I will hate. You will not be supporting people who are doing things that God hates. Let me show you one verse in the Bible. It's in first, it's in the second chronicles, chapter 19, verse 2. Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 2. Look at this. And Jehu, the son of Ananiah the seer, went out to meet him and said unto King Jehoshaphat, Look at this. Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Look at that. There are some people, they do not understand that if somebody is doing what God hates, that they should not go there and support and help 
and build and uh, give offering there somebody is walking against Christ is walking against Calvary is walking against the sacrifice of Christ maybe he's joining uh, maybe angels with the worship and he's joining idolatry and all this syncretism and everything uh, and then they say uh, they're doing a program and then somebody will go there and they'll be supporting them uh, and the people are doing evil and they are not exalting uh, the sacrifice of Christ you hate what God hates let's say for example now we have a music uh, department here and we have a good uh, you know players on the instruments they have the keyboard and they can play very well and then after our service if that person who is very good on the keyboard and very good playing musical instrument if he goes to a particular assembly a particular fellowship where they're teaching false doctrine where they're not exalting Christ and where the standard of holiness is not being maintained but it's the one that is going to after he leaves a deeper life a worship or service is the one that will go there and help them how to improve on their music without improving their doctrine how to improve their singing without changing their evil doctrine and the erroneous doctrine that person is like this Jehoshaphat helping Ahab to win the war helping Ahab to fight against God is still worshiping Baal and Jehoshaphat is helping him God hates that kind of service it's like if you're a builder for example you can build very well you're an architect you're whatever it is you can do and then the other religion they are building something and they say they have heard about you and then they say well can you build this for us we learn that you are first class builder you are first class architect and then we are we're projecting our religion of course you know we don't believe in Christ we don't believe is the son of God we don't believe that is a savior but we want to employ you to help us build so that when you finish building we'll be preaching to the people to neglect Christ not to believe in Christ if you go to do that you are like this Jehoshaphat because you are helping the people that oppose Christ you cannot do that Christ hates that and whatever Christ hates you're going to hate let's say for example Example, you know the you are an ICT expert and you know how to social media this and this you know everything and there are people who are projecting their false doctrine to a little congregation and then a, a member there knows about you and then calls you and invites you and he says can you help our assembly you say what do you mean we hear that you're an expert in ICT in social media our pastor this is what he preaches you say well that is uh, false if he's also preaching this you say that is false it's not emphasizing salvation it's not emphasizing holiness without which no man shall say the Lord in fact he says nobody can be holy everybody will continue in their sin only the grace of God will see everybody through but anyway you say mine is not for their doctrine I just want to help them you are helping false preachers you're helping evil doers. You're helping the people that are spreading iniquity and sin. You are not of Christ. If you have Christ, Christ hates iniquity and he hates wickedness and he hates evil. What he hates, you will hate. What he hates, I will hate. You will not love the doctrine of the Nicolaitans and you will not love the doctrine of Balaam because Christ says, I hate that, you will hate it too in Jesus' name. Let me have a good amen. amen. Let's look at Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, we're reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 2, verse 15. So as thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which sin I hate. 
Christ was talking and was talking to the church. He said, you have them who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans and I hate that doctrine. Well, therefore, if you go to them, this is my extra time. This is my free time. I've done my duty in the church. I've preached in deeper life. I've handled that in deeper life. But now my free time, I'm going to use that now to go and help them spread the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. But Jesus said, that's the thing I hate. If you're a child of God, you understand there are things God hates and you will hate them in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two is the eternal excellency and equality of Christ. The eternal excellency and the equality of Christ. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 8, we're talking about this, his excellency as well as equality with God. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8, but unto the the son he says thy throne O God is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom look at verse 9 in verse 9 thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore therefore because you love righteousness because you hate iniquity therefore God even thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows we're looking at three things here let's let's read verse 10 in verse 10 it says thou lord in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth the father created the earth and the son in equal participation created the earth the father laid the foundation of the earth and the son in equal participation activity laid the foundation of the earth thou lord in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth the heavens are the works of thine hand talking to Christ and talking about Christ the heavens are the works of thy hand the son is equal to the father let's look at three things here number one the eternal exaltation of Christ as God the eternal exaltation of Christ as God number two the eternal equality of Christ with God he is equal with the father equal to the father the eternal equality of Christ with God and number three the eternal empire the eternal territory the eternal dominion the eternal empire of Christ and God let's look at number one Hebrews uh, chapter 1 reading from verse 9 uh, that's the eternal exaltation of Christ as God thou love as loved righteousness and hated iniquity therefore God even thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows is above all men is above all angels is above archangels is at the same level with the almighty God and then he tells us in verse 10 in verse 10 and thou Lord in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the world of thine hand look at some two we're looking at it from verse 6 in some two we're looking at verse 6 it says yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion that's the father talking and he's talking about the son look at verse 7 in verse 7 he says I will declare the decree this is the decree of heaven this is the decree of the almighty God I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me the Lord has said unto me thou art my son 
this day have I begotten thee. That's talking about when he came to the earth. And then he says in verse 8, in verse 8, ask of me. And I shall give thee the kingdom for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. And look at Hebrews. Let's come back to Hebrews chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 1. We're reading from verse 6. It says, and again, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the angels of God worship him. You cannot worship man. You cannot worship an angel. You cannot worship Gabriel. You cannot worship Michael. And so some people that are saying uh, Jesus is a uh, Michael. Jesus is angel Gabriel. That's not true. He says, let all the angels of God with Gabriel and Michael and whatever name they have, let them worship him. Jesus is equal to the Father because he has been exalted. Exalted. Look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, we're reading from verse 9. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him, God the Father, has highly exalted God the Son, and given him a name which is a above every name above the name of angels above the name of men above the name of Moses or Aaron above the name of any high priest above the name of any human being above any name in heaven any name on earth any name under the earth wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name and then it says in verse 10 in verse 10 that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow i thought the church would say amen, amen. that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and then in verse 11 it says and that every tongue whether in heaven on earth or under the earth that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father praise the Lord Colossians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 9 in Colossians chapter 2 looking at verse 9 for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily final it says in Christ our Savior in Christ our Lord in Christ the Son of God who is God in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and then it says in verse 10 it says and ye are complete in him and I am complete in him and I am complete in him uh, somebody said I went to the hospital and they said I'm not complete thank God I am complete if you say so it will be so I am complete if you confess it you will possess it I am complete and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power let's look at number two here number two is the eternal equality of christ with god the eternal equality of christ with god there is no time that Christ had not been equal to the Father or with the Father. He tells us in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7. Zechariah chapter 13, we're looking at verse 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. That's the Father talking and it's referring to Christ as shepherd. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man that is my fellow. He became man so that he can lift all men out of sin to salvation and to righteousness. He came from heaven to earth so he can take the men on earth 
take them to heaven and yet the father said is the man that is my fellow says the lord of hosts the lord of hosts that's god almighty referring to the lord jesus christ when he became man when he be, when he came to suffer for our sins he says he is my fellow smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered and i will turn my hand upon the little ones look at philippians we're looking at philippians chapter 2 verse 6 philippians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 6 in philippians chapter 2 looking at verse 6 see what the lord is saying he says who being the who being in the form of god that is christ in the form of god he thought it not robbery to be equal with god christ in the form of god having the nature of god having the same divinity as god having the same eternality as god having the same uh, attributes of god he says he thought it not trouble to be equal with god let's look at uh, john chapter 10 we're reading from verse 10 in john chapter 10 reading from verse 10 he says i and my father are one uh, sorry it's john chapter 10 reading from bastachi in bastachi it says in bastachi i and my father are one that clears it up very well from all eternity the son jesus christ had been equal to the father and that's why it says if you look at um, john chapter 7 chapter 4 verse 17 first john chapter 4 verse 17 remember but now as the lord jesus christ is equal to the father now we come to christ as we come to christ there are some qualities of christ that pass on to us we call them communicable attributes of christ communicable that is you become a new creature you become a child of god you are linked with him you are connected with him and his goodness passes on to you his righteousness passes unto you his holiness passes unto you his meekness passes unto you his loneliness passes unto you and his good works his faith passes unto you those are communicable attributes there are incommunicable attributes of christ is eternality you cannot have that one is infinity you cannot have that one is omnipotence you cannot have that one is omnipresence is present everywhere you cannot have that one is omniscience you cannot have that one those ones are incommunicable attributes but the communicable one is character is love is mercy is gentleness that passes on to you and therefore as jesus said i and my father are one you too as a child of god you say in goodness i and jesus christ were one in mercy i and jesus christ are one in love i and jesus christ are one and in walking in obedience to the heavenly father that will be done not my will but thy be done i and my jesus and my savior my christ we are one look at first john chapter 4 and we're reading there from verse 17 it says in first john chapter 4 reading from verse 17 it says herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because look at this look at this as he is so are we in this world in love we can be like him in faith we can be like him he tells us in hebrews chapter 7 verse 26 hebrews chapter 7 verse 26 he said for such an high priest became us who is holy those are the attributes of christ who is harmless and who is undefiled who is separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens look at those attributes of christ those are communicable attributes he is holy we are holy 
is harmless, it makes us harmless. It's undefiled, it makes us undefiled. And it's uh, separate from sinners, it makes us separate, different from sinners. Made higher than the heavens were seated in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ. The point is this, as Jesus Christ said, is equal to the Father. I and my Father are one, and now you come to Christ, you also want to be like the Lord Jesus Christ, and you want to say all those attributes of Christ, all the character of Christ, all the attitude of Christ, and the beatitudes in Christ, I also can manifest them His grace will be sufficient for me Will be sufficient for you In Jesus name That's why it says in John chapter 17 Verse 21 John chapter 17 Reading from verse 21 That they all may be one As the Father As the Father at in me And I in thee That they also may be one in us That the world may believe That thou hast sent me And then he says in verse 22 He says in verse 22 And the glory which thou gavest me I have given thee them. He wants us to be the same as he is. He wants us to be able to say he has glory and he gave me the glory. He has righteousness. He gave me the righteousness. He has holiness. He gives me the holiness. He has a heart of love for humanity. He gave me that heart of love for humanity. The glory which thou gavest me I have given unto them that they may be one that they may be one even as we are one that they may be one husband and wife that they may be one as the father and the son are one that they may be one parents and children who are born again who are sanctified that they may be one as the father and the son are one members of the church with the minister in the church that they may be one together united there is no difference there is no disunity and there is no discord that they may be one as the father are at one with me and everyone if we say we're children of God and he pardons our sin he cleanses us he sanctifies us he purifies us the reason he purifies us is so that we'll have that same attribute of his that he and the Father are one, and we and Christ were one. We're in agreement with Him. We're never in, the, in disagreement with Him, and then with one another, we're one. And then He tells us in verse 23, He says in verse 23, I in them. I in them. There are some times that you know a Christian will be mistakenly say the devil is inside him, demons are inside him. Jesus never thought of anything like that. Jesus said, When you become a believer, I in them, <clears throat> and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. I pray that will be effected in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and thou hast loved them. Look at this. Thou hast loved them. Tell me what follows there. Tell me out aloud. As thou hast loved me. Uh, one thing here. Because the Father loved the Son, any time Jesus spoke to the Father, he said, I thank you, Father, you always hear me. And because the Lord Jesus said the Father has loved him, even so he has loved you. Every time you pray, the Lord will hear you. And as you pray tonight, the Lord will hear you. Remember the Father, the Son, they are one, and we are one with the Son as well. In First John chapter 2, we're looking at verse 6. In First John chapter 2, verse 6, he that says he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walk. He that says, I'm a child of God, abide in, I abide in Christ, my sins are forgiven, and I have the witness of the Spirit of God saying, I'm a 
child of God, he that says he abides in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. The grace with which he walked, the strength with which he walked, and the focus with which he walked, everything belongs to the believer. I and my father are one, and then you can say, I and my savior are one. He communicates, he transmits into me the grace that he had. And then we're told in First John chapter 3, verse 3, First John chapter 3, we're looking at verse 3, it tells us, here very clearly and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure every man every believer every child of god that has the hope of heaven he purifies himself he doesn't say well i cannot be pure i know jesus is pure i know jesus was pure but i'm just a human being you're more than a human being you have the grace of god in you you have the strength of the Lord in you and you have his righteousness transferred into your life and he says and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure I pray that will be affected in your life in Jesus name how will that be affected in Galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now labor in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Look at that, the same faith that Jesus operated by is wanting to give you that same faith, and as you walk by that same faith you will live the life of christ here on earth in jesus name look at number three here now is the eternal empire of christ and god we look at christ we look at his empire we look at his dominion we look at the extension extensiveness of his territory the eternal empire of christ and god it tells us in psalm 145 psalm 145 and we're reading from verse 10 all thy work shall praise thee o lord and thy saints shall bless thee in verse 11 in verse 11 they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power look at verse 12 in verse 12 to make known to the sons of men his mighty as and the glorious majesty of his kingdom look at verse 13 now in verse 13 it tells us about his kingdom about the extent of that kingdom about the extent of that dominion and it says thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion that's the empire and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations i pray that you'll understand anywhere you are the dominion of christ is there the authority of christ is there he is the head of all principality and power and because you are under his territory and you are under his dominion no evil can happen unto you the dominion of darkness will not have any authority over your life. Anywhere you go, anywhere you are, you understand, his dominion extended, extends and endures unto all generations throughout all generations. Look at Daniel chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 13. Daniel chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 13 for you to understand the extensiveness of the dominion of the territory of the empire of the lord jesus christ and this one that has such extensive dominion extensive territory happens to be your savior happens to be your lord happens to be your master happens to be the one that says i will never leave you i will never forsake you so you can confidently say the lord is my helper i will not fear what man shall do unto me fear will get out of your life in jesus name 
Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near unto him and they brought Christ the son of God the son of man they brought him near unto the ancient of days look at verse 14 in verse 14 and there was given him our Lord and that was given him the Son of God and there was given him our Redeemer and there was given him dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people all nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion praise God I said praise God that's my Savior I said that's my savior. I said that's my Lord. I said that's my redeemer. It's the one that has dominion, everlasting, eternal empire of the redeemer and of Christ. It says his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. And if his kingdom shall not be destroyed, all the subjects of the kingdom, all the citizens of the kingdom, all the children of God in his kingdom, you will not be destroyed in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number three now. In point number three, we're looking at the evident expression and exploits of Christ. The evident expression and the exploits of Christ. We're coming to Psalm 45 and we're reading from verse 4. Psalm 45, we're reading from verse 4. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things he's talking about our savior our lord in majesty to write prosperously and to write with meekness and to write with righteousness and his right hand will demonstrate wonderful things three things we're looking at here number one the express manifestation of god and his glory he came to manifest the power of god and the glory of god the express manifestation of god and his glory number two the exalted majesty of god in his greatness and then number three his excellent his excellent ministry and go of god's grace and goodness let's look at number one number one is the express manifestation of god and his glory remember we're talking about christ we're talking about the government of christ and the glory of christ and in hebrews chapter one reading from verse three Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person that's Christ is the express image of the personality of God upholding all things by the word of his power Christ upholds all things all things on earth all things in the sky all things in the universe is by the power the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high look at first timothy chapter 3 verse 16 in first timothy chapter 3 verse 16 at first timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 16 and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness without any controversy without any argument without any debate without any pro or con is it so or is it not so it is so i said it is so without controversy great is the mystery of godliness god was manifest in the flesh you saw christ you saw god god was manifest in the flesh 
justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles believed on in the world and received up into glory underline that area that says God was manifest in the flesh that's God he was manifest in the flesh you remember Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 here is the angel talking to Joseph the husband of Mary behold a virgin shall be with child is quoting from the Old Testament and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name shout that name Emmanuel Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us Emmanuel God with us what's the title of Jesus over here in verse 23 Emmanuel what's the meaning of Emmanuel God the creator is with us in Christ God the healer is with us in Christ. God the deliverer is with us in Christ. God the savior, God the redeemer, God the lifter up is with us in Christ. You have Christ, he lives in you, all the power, all the glory, all the possibilities in God, they reside inside you. All those possibilities are going to be yours in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look at uh, Romans chapter 9 uh, we're reading from verse 5 in Romans chapter 9 reading from verse 5 uh, it says whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came Christ came that Christ is over all Christ who is over all God blessed forever and the church said Amen he is God and is blessed forever and look at second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 it tells us for God who, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness a shine in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ and so we have Christ he came and it was the manifestation of God and of the glory of God look at point number two there in number two there is the exalted majesty of God in his greatness the exalted majesty of God in his greatness we're coming back to the Psalms and we're looking at Psalm 45 verse 4 it says in thy majesty write prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things look at verse 5 in verse 5 then arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies the arrows of Jesus the arrows of Christ will be sharp in the heart of all the enemies of the of the children of the king in Jesus name whereby the people fall under thee look at verse 6 in verse 6 thy throne O God is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter Psalm 93 we're reading from verse 1 Psalm 93 reading from verse 1 is still talking about Christ it says the Lord reigneth is reigning in your heart the Lord reigneth is reigning in your family the Lord reigneth is reigning in the work of your hand the Lord reigneth is reigning in our church I said the Lord is reigning in our church the Lord reigneth he is clothed with majesty the Lord is clothed with strength wherewith he has girded himself the world also is established that it cannot be moved it tells us in psalm 145 in psalm 145 we're looking at verse 5 psalm 145 reading from verse 5 i will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty 
and of thy wondrous works and then in verse 6 it tells us and men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts I will declare thy greatness then verse 7 tells us it says they shall be abundantly they shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness look at verse 12 in verse 12 to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom and then in verse 13 verse 13 says thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations i pray all the benefits of what we are reading tonight will be in your life in jesus name and let's come to number three now in number three we're looking at his excellent ministry of god's grace and goodness the excellent ministry of god's grace and goodness in hebrews chapter 8 reading from verse 6 hebrews chapter 8 reading from verse 6 but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry now in this generation now in this century now at this very time now in our church now with every believer but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises all that we have read about in the old testament they were good good promises but now we have better promises and the lord will take you higher than the old testament and the lord will make you greater than the old testament and the blessings of the lord flowing into your life will be greater than that of the old testament in jesus name because now this is what we have uh, look at first corinthians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 9 first corinthians chapter 2 reading from verse 9 uh, it says but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them uh, that love him the people that love him are they here tonight I has not seen what God has prepared for you. Ears have not heard what God has prepared for you. It has not entered into the heart of man. All those things that God has prepared for them that love him. Look at verse 10. It says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit it has not entered into the ears of other people but god has now revealed them unto us yea it says the spirit searches all things yea the deep things of god understand this point number three point number three is the excellent ministry and the exploits of christ excellent ministry and the the expression evident expression and the exploits of christ from today new exploits will begin in your life will begin in your ministry and this power of the lord will not lose its effect in your life in jesus name you'll be a good representative of christ when you pray, heaven will recognize that you and Christ, you are on the same line and his communicable attribute has been transferred unto you. Heaven will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 32. Daniel chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 32. It says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupted by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. That's why we took the time tonight to exalt Christ. That's why we took the time tonight to explain all those verses of Old Testament and New Testament referring to Christ so that you will know Christ more. 
you'll know Christ deeply, you'll know Christ spiritually, you will know Christ in his divinity, and the moment you know Christ in his majesty, you know Christ in his manifestations, and you know Christ in faith, and you know Christ, and you see the vision of Christ, the people that do know their God shall be stronger, and they will do exploits. You will do exploits in Jesus' name. The power of God will work mightily in your life. And what you have never been able to do from today, as you always remember Christ when you pray, you always remember Christ when you want to take a decision, you always remember Christ anywhere you go, anything you're doing, the power and the exploits of heaven will be realized in your life in Jesus' name. John chapter 14 verse 12 in John chapter 14 verse 12 verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me that's my brother there that's my sister there he that believeth on me the works that I do he shall do also that he man is weak the works that Christ has done you will do in Jesus name that's his exploits. His exploits will be manifested in your life. In fact, it says, and greater works than these shall they do because I go unto my Father. The Lord has gone to the Father, and anything you ask him, his power will come into your life, will flood your life, even tonight in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, the exploits of Christ. Now is the turn of the believer. I and my father are one. And the believer says, I and my Savior were one. And in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, an individual, if thou canst believe, if thou canst believe, if thou canst believe in your house, if thou canst believe in your local church, if thou canst believe in the the office if thou can believe while you are walking on the road if thou can believe when you meet any challenge if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth all things are possible unto him that believeth if you truly believe how many things are possible for you all things are possible you will find it real it will be true in your life in jesus name in matthew chapter 21 matthew chapter 21 we're looking at verse 20 there in matthew chapter 21 reading from verse 20 it tells us and when the disciples saw it they marveled saying how soon the fig tree withered away jesus made a pronouncement and then the disciples Paul said, we're surprised that how soon that tree has withered away. Look at the reply of Jesus in verse 21. It says in verse 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree. You will not only do that which I have done, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. Somebody is going to speak to his mountain and the mountain of his family and the mountain of needy members in the church and whatever you say it shall be done in verse 22 in verse 22 it tells us and all things how many things and all things i mean about your life how many things about your wife how many things about your husband how many things about the members of the church who are concerned about how many things all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer believing ye shall receive all things whatsoever i will ask in prayer believing i will receive all things whatsoever i will ask in prayer believing i will receive I am well, I am healed, I am strong, I am an overcomer, I will run and not be weary, 
I will walk, I will not faint. I am a conqueror. I will do exploits. The works of Christ I will do. Greater works than that I will do. Because I and my Savior were one. Rise up and let it begin to happen. Rise up and let it begin to happen. Don't look down yourself anymore. Understand the qualities of Christ. Understand everything the Word of God has revealed about Christ. And those communicable attributes the Lord has also communicated, has transferred unto you. You are strong now. You are not weak. You are up. You are not down. You have set your feet on the mountain top and you have established your goings. And now you understand that because Christ is who he is, you also, as a believer, you'll be what you ought to be in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.